Hi everyone, it's Grace Bennett. I'm the social media manager here at JDRF. And today I am joined by Josephine Bennett, news director at Georgia Public Broadcasting, and even more importantly than that, my mom. How are you today? I'm great. Hi, Grace. <laughs> it's good to see you. This is this is fun for me. Um, so I hope it's as fun for you as it is for me. Today we are going to be talking about T1D diagnosis from both the child at the time and parent perspective. And we are also going to be talking about a T1D icon. Mary Tyler Moore was a huge inspiration for millions of people, both living with type 1 diabetes and not living with type 1 diabetes. So we'll kick things off there. So my first question for you is outside of her life with T1D, you have talked about Mary Tyler Moore a ton and how she was such an inspiration to you growing up, watching her on television. Can you tell us a little more about that? Absolutely. I knew uh, very early on, I mean, super early, um, that I wanted to be a journalist. I would see people on TV and tell my parents, I want to do that when I'm a grown up. Um, and so when the Mary Tyler Moore show came on the air in, I believe it was 1970, I was nine years old, but I already knew I wanted to be a journalist. And when, um, when that happened, I was literally obsessed with the show. Um, it was at a time when women really didn't have jobs like that. Women were not uh, well represented in newsrooms. Um, they were not well represented in any kind of management, which Mary later moved on to. And, um, and so she was really a role model for me as an aspiring journalist. And I think watching that show made me have hope for the future and realize that, you know, I could do that too. And so when I graduated from college, I started to do it and I've been doing it ever since. And I now, um, manage a whole bunch of really talented reporters and and I love it. Um I love it all these years later. So yeah, no, I she definitely I think shattered many a glass ceiling uh within the span of her career and was also very funny while doing it, which is always in my book a huge plus. Um so I was I have to say I mentioned the Chuckles the Clown episode. I mean there there's so many that are memorable, but um that is one of my standouts. And then all of the social barriers she broke in the 70s. It's really hard to look back now and sorry for going on and on, but but she really did um talk about subjects like racism, like um, gender inequality and pay, things that were really not spoken about to the extent they are today. And she really was a trailblazer, both Mary Tyler Moore and the character. Yeah, so that is a perfect actual shift into the T1D portion of this conversation. So as you know, uh, better than anyone probably, I was diagnosed in December 2001 at age 12. Um, and so I want you to kind of think back, uh, we, you know, to kind of the days and weeks leading up to my diagnosis, the day I was diagnosed and kind of take me through up until the pediatrician came in and told you what it, he suspected it was, what kind of you were feeling while I was like losing all this weight and super thirsty and kind of from that parent perspective. Just walk, right. walk me through that. Well, I would say that you lost a staggering amount of weight. You lost 22 pounds in three weeks. And it was in December, so the holidays were ramping up. There were starting to be parties. And I remember being at one particular neighborhood party the day before you went to the doctor and one woman approaching me, uh, commenting on your appearance and saying, she needs to see a psychiatrist. She, I, I think she may have an eating disorder. Um, you know, certainly that's something all mothers uh, think about, but that one hadn't occurred to me. I just, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't really have answers as a mother. 
I did worry about your weight. So I took you out. We went to the grocery store and we literally bought yodels and like Suzy Q's. We bought anything all I wanted. Yeah, anything. I, I really walked you through the aisles and said, you can buy any food you want, which makes me laugh now. Um, I and so, cooking cup the night before yeah. I went to the doctor. And well, and, and so, you know, that was the leading up to it part, but I had no idea what was going on. Honestly, type one never occurred to me. It just wasn't even on my radar. Um, I, my frame of refer reference for it and JDRF was Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> that was about it. Wow. So, um, so those day days leading up to are just seared in my mind. And of course, the day of diagnosis is burned in my mind. Yeah, luckily for me, that's not the not the case. Um, yeah, I remember it, obviously. Um, but I do, even better than day of diagnosis, remember, it's what Mary Tyler Moore has being your point of reference for people right. who also didn't know when you told them what I had been diagnosed with, what T1D was. So, um, and I've, I've heard, I've told that story to a few people and heard that that was many a mother's reference point. Um, you know, right after diagnosis for what T1D was. So, you know, continuing our conversation on, we won't embarrass me here and talk about my teenage years and how, shall we say, difficult I was when it came to uh, T1D management. We'll keep my, keep my spotless reputation intact. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, as you know, I have faced several different complications when it comes to my eyes, which was also a complication that Mary faced. Um, and when these started happening, um, you know, the floaters in my eyes and those issues, and then obviously the retina detachment, I was a fully grown adult living a thousand miles from you. So, you know, I know it was terrifying for me because I was like, I'm going to go blind at 28 years old. And I didn't know what treatment looked like um, or anything like that. But, you know, again, kind of from the perspective of, of a parent who was living far away and your child's dealing with this complication, how was, how was that experience for you? Well, really scary. I mean, at this point, you and I have come up with a nickname for the one, the bad eye, right? <laughs> or is that the good eye? No, the good eye, Lefty. We the good eye we call Lefty, lefty. yeah. Right and, um, and it's very important to protect that good eye. Um, honestly, I, I was sort of blown away because of your age. Um, you know, you you don't think about complications, long term complications along the way. But I think um, as you've had it, 21, are we at 21 yet? Because it was 20 last. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 21 years in, you're starting to see some of those things. And the vision is extremely scary as a parent because your vision is your independence. Um, and I'm an independent. That's at least parent. what I thought. I know there's a lot of adaptive things in the world, and people live amazing full lives. So I, you know, I I recognize and honor that. But but as a parent living far away from you, um, I worry about your independence and you, you know, uh, living in a in a large city and being able to get from here to there and. And um, so during those tenuous times, I mean, it was really scary. And then, of course, every time you go and see your retinologist now, we always have a check in as you're leaving the office. Yeah. And, I, you know, I you before I'm even fully outside the room. Right? <laughs> and you're texting and, you know, because um, as a parent, I can't fix it. I, I couldn't make this go away. I couldn't fix it. Um, and, you know, that's that's the thing uh, as you know, that every sorry, every mother wants is to be able to take something really difficult away from their child. And and in this case, I absolutely couldn't. It was just getting you through the teenage years. And you're at a point now where 
I respect you take excellent care of your health. You don't take risks um, and you have a real handle on it. So I have to trust you. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I obviously had no reference point. I mean, growing up when I was diagnosed, it was, it wasn't, oh, it affects your retinas. It was a, you go blind, you lose your feet, your kidneys <laughs> fail. Like complication, I didn't know actually what complications like did to you like you know and we're so fortunate and you know again to bring it back to mary tyler moore oh she has really you know she really championed eye complication research because it's something that impacted her life so i'm just very grateful that things have improved technology has improved both when it comes to t1d management and treating complications because Sometimes it's not anything the person with T1D did wrong. Um, it's just the passage of time. Oh, and, well, and, and I just want to throw in, as far as Mary Tyler Moore goes, I, I would look at her as sort of a standard bearer that, okay, Mary Tyler Moore was able to live with this and, and live with it in a very public way space and and just do it with grace and and knowing that there was somebody out there that had been through that was you know something that always always gave me hope and that even if you did have to deal with some really difficult things down the road that it was possible um so anything any research involving the eyes or any um anything that that leans that way. I, you know, when I'm raising money, when I'm donating, it is certainly an area that, that I like to focus on. Um, cause I'm a mom. Well, my, um, one of my favorite anecdotal, because we lived very, you know, not close to the chapter that was closest to us when I was younger. Um, but I remember your first kind of introduction to JDRF outside of the Rufus that I got at the hospital was um, when Mary passed away, your first donation to JDRF was a memorial donation in honor of her. So this field, it's a, I love a full circle moment, uh, you know, love a full circle moment. So the last question I have is, and you can look at this from the lens as another parent coming to talk to you or going back to yourself in that children's hospital room in 2001. Um, if you could give a nugget of wisdom or a piece of advice to a parent whose child has just received a T1D diagnosis, whether they're younger, whether it's in adulthood, the teen years, any time really, but just from that parent perspective, what would that piece of advice be? Well, I, I knew what of advice um, was difficult for me to obtain because it's been so many years. And I mean, the internet was around, <laughs> but you know, well, not no, that things, so we didn't have a lot of social media. Um, so I am actually in a parents group and I find myself more in a offering advice and support role. Um, I would say first, first thing I would say to any, you know, mother, father, caregiver is that it's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be okay. You're going to figure this out. Your child will figure this out. Let them show you how capable they are. Um, and then the second thing I would say, because as you mentioned, so I'll bring it up, the teenage years were really hard. Um, and, you know, we have some memories in that department and I won't, I won't share them. But Not great ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were both scared of your um, pediatric endocrinologist. Let me just say, I felt like I was going in and failing a test every time we went in. Um, but, but I would say that um, teenagers behaving like teenagers do in a lot of areas, um, for some kids, it, it's going to take a little time and try to keep them as healthy as you can while they're going through that. And some of them, the amazing technologies, I know you're grateful I didn't have Dexcom back then, but boy, I would have loved it. Um, the technology that exists today does make it so much easier. Um, but I would just say, trust your, trust your child once they get to the point where they're taking care of themselves. And then, you know, just, it's going to be okay. You, you will get through this and, um, 
and ultimately, you know, your your child will be a a stronger person for it. And, you know, as we all kind of wait and watch some of the incredible advances that are coming out, um, I, I hear so much, obviously, because of where you work, um, about all the great, you know, great things that are happening. So just be patient would be the last advice I would give them. Yeah, no, definitely. And I know from my point of view, I can't, you know, Yes, 21 years is a long time, but in the grand scheme of life, it's and science, um, you know, it's amazing how much progress has happened even in the time I've been diagnosed. So um, I will echo that from the patient perspective. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time and doing doing me a favor uh, <laughs> and recording this with us. If you all out there in our audience enjoyed this content, leave us a comment, throw us a like, hit the subscribe or follow button, and also send us a DM. Let us know who you'd like us to interview next or down the line. Thanks for watching, everybody. Do, do.